Hi, I'm John Bryan, West Virginia civil rights lawyer, and it's Christmas Eve, and I'm here at the office working, and I really hope that I get my BB gun in the morning. So I'm um, just making sure that I, I work to the very last second this year so that Santa really knows that I deserve that BB gun. Anyways, uh, just talking about somebody, you know, a good Christmas Eve video is maybe some some boys who weren't so good Um you know, fairly recently. And there's this, really this case that's that's actually very interesting from a civil rights lawyer's perspective that happened in West Virginia, where you had a, a police beating situation that was caught on video. And, you know, all we complain and people complain that law enforcement doesn't police itself at all. And actually, when this video was, was discovered internally, the, actually, the governor came out on the news and 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 condemned it, and they ended up firing uh, all of these police officers involved, and some of them did get their jobs back. But then you had a federal indictment, a federal prosecution of the two state troopers who were involved in in uh, what's depicted on this video, and that's really the interesting thing uh, that happened here. And we'll we'll get to that, but first, let's take a look at the video. So this happened in Berkeley County, West Virginia. There's a police chase. Uh, you can see the 16 year old who's fleeing his car has a pretty dramatic accident there and hits a telephone pole it looks like and the car's smoking and beat up and you have two state troopers here. And this is a dash cam video from one of the two deputies who were present's car. All right, so they pulled, pulled the kid out here and you get four, four on one, basically, and you, you'll see just some strikes, some kicks right there. Boom, boom, boom. Some, I mean, he really winds back for those. And the guys in green are state troopers, and, and uh, the ones in the different uniforms with the lighter pants are deputies. So you can see they're rolling him over, getting him, getting him handcuffed. And I mean, he he did run, he did run from the the cops. I think they approached 100 miles per hour or so. So they get him handcuffed, and then. And uh, then you have the knee on the back, or possibly the neck, can't tell. They got the blur, face blurred. But then you have some strikes here. Boom. He's really winding up. And, uh, I mean, it looks like closed fist punches to me, but it's hard to tell. Do, do those look like closed fist punches to you? All right. So then they drag him off to the side. His pants, it, 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 I'm, I don't want to say that maybe he didn't jump away and resist a little bit there, but they they pulled him. They, I mean, he, he kind of threw him like a rag doll right there. So... Pretty dramatic video as far as excessive excessive force videos go. I mean, that one, I mean, for me, I think that would have been a piece of cake. And then back when I saw it, I was kind of waiting by the phone for this kid's family to call me. So I could I could get his college education paid for pretty quickly. In fact, I was you know joking around with one, one of the uh, um, lawyers who frequently re represents police and, and civil lawsuits here in the state. And uh, he, he kind of laughed at me and said, yeah, well, you keep waiting because he doesn't need a lawyer. So I'm not sure what happened with that, but to make a long story short, what happened is, you know, they, they fired these officers. Some of them got rehired, but they ended up prosecuting this one particular state trooper and he was indicted by a federal grand jury. And very cleverly, the defense lawyer tried the case before the federal judge sitting as a bench trial. So there was no jury. There was no jury to decide whether or not, um, he was going to be convicted. It was just the judge herself. And this is really not coincidentally the same judge that I've had to appeal to the Fourth Circuit for ruling in favor of the police before in civil lawsuits. But this wasn't a civil lawsuit. This is a criminal prosecution. So, you know, it it's it's hard to get too outraged at, you know, a judge protecting the rights of a criminal defendant. So hopefully it, it applies across the board and not just for police officers. So let's uh, take a look at the at the order that came out of it, because what happened was, is after a bench trial, the judge issues a, a written ruling, which you don't have in jury trials. Sometimes with a jury, you don't know what happened. But this is the order that came out of it, and the judge actually found the officer not guilty, acquitted him. So that it was a done deal after that, even though the governor had said what he said, the state police had, had said what they said and fired the officer. He was acquitted of 
the federal deprivation of, of civil rights, basically excessive force. So this is the actual order itself. Um, I highlighted some interesting parts. So she writes, the day after the defendant was indicted, the Berkeley County prosecuting attorney improperly released a police cruiser dashboard camera video of the scene of the alleged offense and issued a press release describing what the video purportedly showed. So the judge is taking exception that the prosecutor's office had released the video. And they note, she notes in footnote one here that while the court recognizes that there's a public interest in viewing video evidence of alleged law enforcement misconduct, this public interest is basically different here because you have the constitutional rights of the individual who's charged with the commission of a criminal offense. So um, if the individual proceeds to trial and the individual's trial tried in an open courtroom, interested members of the public may attend for observation. That's the, um, maybe not in 2020 though, after uh, the new normal of coronavirus. And footnote two, uh, while the press and public are free to distribute information as they see fit, every attorney is an officer of the court, member of the bar is ethically constrained from making public statements which prejudice the defendant. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I'm defending a case where the, the, the governor has come out and, and, and made statements against my client, kind of poisoned the jury pool, I would bring that up too. In fact, I've tried that before, and, and criminal cases to try to get a change of venue based on on statements that were made by the prosecutor's prosecutor's office into the newspaper, the TV news, or uh, you know statements made by the police, you know, which usually isn't isn't appropriate. And um, you know when you're prosecuting somebody, so um, here the the judge did call them out on that. So. The judge goes through all the facts, all the testimony, though it's all on it's all on video. Um, it's really a surprising verdict to me, but you know they here's kind of what it hinged on, and I think this is interesting. Even if it came down to willfulness, even if the court were to find any of the four uses of force to be objectively unreasonable beyond any reasonable doubt, the government did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant acted willfully. Now, what does that mean? So she writes, specifically, the government did not prove that the defendant acted with a specific intent to deprive J.H., the juvenile, of his right to be free from unreasonable seizures, which includes the right to be free from the use of unreasonable force by one acting under the color of, color of law. So she found that the government, the federal prosecutors, did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this police officer intended to use excessive force. Okay. Well, it is an objective standard or it's supposed to be. So they, you know, they, they like to use the, the fact that it's an objective standard, not a subjective one in the civil case context. But here, um, apparently it, in, in the court's mind, it did not meet the willfulness requirement under the law. And she found that, you know, there was doubt as to whether he intended to to harm the person illegally, basically. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly even, even what that means. The defendant's actions were not consistent with some, someone trying to inflict pain or do great harm to a suspect because they intended to deprive them of the right to be free from unreasonable force. So they were not consistent with someone trying to inflict pain or do great harm to a suspect. Well, I mean, there is a video of of him, you know, punching the guy. But she cites here United States versus Cote, Second Circuit, 2008, which we're not in the Second Circuit, but that's that that's okay, where the nature of the force itself, repeatedly striking and kicking the suspect in the head, suggested that the defendant intended to injure him rather than simply restrain him. Now, it, it very much looks like on video, they've got the kid in handcuffs, rolled over, it's four on one, and yet you have punches and you don't see really the the kid you know trying to hit them or 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 do anything really in fact it appear he appears to be handcuffed so what is a jury or a judge sitting as a jury supposed to presume from punches and and the kicks of somebody who is is not a threat to anybody physically at that point assuming that's the case well, it, it, it's, it's a little bit of, of, of an unusual r result, but I think that's, that's why I brought it up. It's, it's, uh, it's both an exception to the rule where 
law enforcement covers something up and doesn't try to internally regulate themselves. But it's also an example of them doing that, but then losing in the end to a federal court who acquitted the person. So just uh, an interesting case. And, you know, usually when things are on video, it's, 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 it's a piece of cake. And, uh, you know, usually being a prosecutor is a piece of cake. I mean, how do you not, how do you not win that case? That's just my opinion though. But uh, it probably didn't help that you had the governor jumping out and, and kind of sticking his nose in the situation before really the case was investigated. Um, now, from my perspective as a civil rights lawyer, I thought it was really interesting to see that. And I, I like to see that. But from a criminal defense perspective, at the same time, I, I don't like to see the government, um, you know, r r failing to give somebody the the presumption of innocence and, and poisoning the jury pool and all that. But it, it, it really is a, sort of an anomaly. And you know, it, who doesn't like a, a good police video? So Merry Christmas, have a have a happy um, Christmas Eve and uh, a safe one. And, you know, please uh, pray for me that I get my BB gun and I hope you get what you want as well. And uh, I'll see you soon.